Off and on the clock, we got MLB opening day tomorrow. The lobby is packed, including a very special contest, the Badge Bros Brawl. We're going to talk about that at the top, and then naturally we'll fall back into our football ways, ripping a big board draft together. It's off and on the clock with Pete and the Badge Bros. Let's do it. All right, guys. I know uh, you got some some baseball fever here. Nez rocking the Steelers cap. The the lobby's packed. How are you guys feeling? Feeling good, man. Feeling excited. Nice, John. Yeah, I'm pumped. Um, pumped for opening day. The the haters said it wasn't possible here, though. Um, I had 48 dingers done at the start of the week, and I told everyone I was going to do 10 yesterday before it closed and stuff and i got myself all the way to 93 over the course of the Ooh. week so you know Wait, the haters no, they, no autoing manually drafting all those manually drafting they loved it they love to piss all over my volume because they know nez does way more than me but i just i just had to bury the haters that i was ready for opening day <laughs> what was your process how were you getting so many uh drafts in i was doing four at a time I was doing okay. four or five at a time. Yeah. Well, I was following your uh, your Instagram stories. Was it over the weekend where you you were skiing, you were throwing down beers, and I mean, what a what a renaissance, man! <laughs> it was it was pretty fun. I described it to Nez as like hot tub time machine. It's uh like it's um it's called Nar Weekend, and it's basically just like college frat end of season blowout on the mountain. And it's a uh, it was a guy's bachelor party, so we went up there and we snowboarded three days and yeah it was fun it was that awesome. looked fun uh i was definitely uh jealous of you guys there what what's up with my there there we, there go. we go um but uh this badge bros brawl guys uh i feel like i gotta rip one of these before we get to the, the football stuff here and i've been i've been cramming for this slate so i feel like i'm i'm ready to attack it with <laughs> let's go baby um just a little news for those who didn't see in the discord about opening day, the the baseball gods were were not on our side with the weather stuff. And the three early games that made up like the three game slate and then made the 12 game slate into a 15 game slate. Basically, two are looking like they're going to be postponed and the third one might be postponed as well. So underdog got ahead of it and they just axed those contests from the lobby when they were like, you know, one, one of them was like less than 10% full and the other one was probably like 30% full. So they were getting ahead of stuff. So now we just have the main contest, the Badge Bros Brawl, and then a couple other side ones there that are all just the 12 game main slate. Yeah, definitely the right move because for the early slates, you wouldn't be able to literally have a contest. Literally yeah. 66% of entrants would be would be dead immediately. And then for the like the all day one, you'd essentially just have like two main slates like overlapping. It just didn't really make a lot of sense. So this will this will definitely be be beneficial. So I'm gonna just kind of walk you guys through. I know you haven't done a lot of drafts and just kind of given you a front yeah, row thanks. seat to kind of how a maestro works here. And it is a really interesting decision at one, two. Oh wow. I was about to talk about Mookie Betts and he goes, What a reach. Um I was one of the first people to be on Corbin Carroll. So I kind of wanted to do that as a brand recognition play. But when, I mean, when Ellie falls to one, two, we just got to scoop up that value. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're hands off on here, Pete. We, we know that you've been working hard. You've been in the streets. You, you know, you're kind of holding up that 100% advance rate title. Uh, we, you got this, man. We're not, we're, we're, we're off. You, you, you let us know what's up. Yeah, and I mean, I'm relieved to see Otani go off the board at three. Um, mm. I'm not going to touch that guy with a 10-foot pole these <laughs> days. Uh, Corbin Carroll falling. I mean, what is going on? Is this just an influencer draft room or what? Corbin and Ellie has to be very rare combinatorially. Another, oh! <laughs> well done. Well done. They knew. They, they, they knew that you were the OG Corbin Carroll slappy. They wanted to give you your, your props and give you a chance to, to roll with the bit. Now, I guess the question is, is like, when do you start to scroll down? When is, or are you, yeah. when, when is the value scooping stop? When are well, you full? I mean, there's a, there's a clear tear break. I think right after about uh, when you see these green check marks here, um, that's when uh, after Tyler glass now, uh, mm. those are, yeah, the, uh, the green check marks, a new thing where I kind of put it in for my own tear breaks here. Love um, that. But you know, one of the things I like to, 
uh, the the old meta in baseball used to be you you stack up players at Coors Field. The new meta is you stack players up away from Coors Field if the team plays at Coors Field at home. So that's why I am stacking up the Diamondbacks here versus the Colorado Rockies. We have now taken three picks that I know are going to be very rare to pair mm. in this contest, and now is where mm. we're going to start squaring right. stuff down, guys. The the irony in this right now is the the Arizona stack is my highest owned stack behind the spreadsheet, and Pete just rolls in here and he uh, knows the meta. When you know ball, man, it's just like it's innate. You 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 either got it or you don't. Yeah, and um, you know, uh. It's it's kind of fun, like you know, people love drafting Brendan Rice because it's uh, you know Jerry Rice's uh, son, and obviously Marvin Harrison Jr. I do like getting Justin Bieber's cousin Shane Bieber here. Uh, <laughs> I am gonna go ahead and lock up a pitcher, and then I promise I'm gonna start scrolling down after getting the Biebs here. Good We're Canadian waiting. kid. Little, little, yeah. chalk, little chalk zone action right now. All right, here's your yeah. chance. Okay, let's see. It's it's time to scroll down a little bit here. Um, you know, it's been a long time. Uh, since Altuve was in the news, uh, noted cheater, really short little guy. And I don't know if you guys heard, but it is a uh, short King spring right now. We're scrolling Ooh. down for Jose, uh, Altuve. Right. You are literally just like taking the players that John and I have already drafted a lot. <laughs> 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 this is, this is, this is, this is totally off, off script here. We, we, we did not do this. I promise. Okay. Well, uh, don't worry. I, I can dig even deeper here. On this slate, guys, I mean, the thing you want to remember is this is, uh, especially now with kind of the shortened slate here, this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 game slate. And this is what I like to call the late game hammer. For people mm. who aren't familiar with this, you like to have that hammer. There's going to be a lot of people showing their screenshots. I'm winning the Badge Bros Brawl. No, you aren't. Not until Colorado <laughs> and Arizona play at 10, 10 p.m. Eastern, which I'll definitely be staying up for because I'll be so jazzed. <laughs> That's a Sweat, sweat, baby. <laughs> yeah. And so I do want to get a little oppo here. Uh Run Colorado, Nolan Jones. I mean, the dingers are gonna be flying. You're gonna think it's Coors Field down there in Arizona. Oh, we wrap it up with Nolan Jones. Pretty Great sharp job. pick. I mean, he's a third round pick in the dingers right now, and he's going very rarely drafted in this contest. So okay, structurally. Uh, what what did I do? Because I was barely paying attention to that. Other than knowing I should probably have one more than one outfielder, and I needed a pitcher. <laughs> you, you, you got yourself a nice, yeah. you got yourself a nice little Arizona stack there from the one and most likely two hole hitter. So there's some positive correlation at the top of the lineup there. Yeah, what yeah are, you, got, you got the stack in. You're good, man. What are what is the is the meta for these? Like what what is the line for for stacking in a in an MLB daily? Usually, like stacking two teams, like either like a two-two with a one-off or two and three, is like what you see a lot of the time. What's also really popular is just like stacking one team with like four or five of their of their own hitters wow. uh, in, in one lineup as well. We've seen that win like actually like quite a lot uh, last season. Even on a bigger a uh, full slate like this. Full slate, yeah. I think, yeah, it, it has happened. If it's, like, somebody that nobody is, like, on at all, which, I mean, there's literally, like, on 12 teams, you're talking 24 times 9. I mean, that's, like, over 200 draftable players, like, in reality. I mean, and any of them can hit a home run and go off and be be somebody that you need. It's uh, it's challenging. The one thing we, you... we talked oh, about on the preview show yesterday, Pete, was, like, the big difference between correlation in baseball versus other sports is it's completely uncapped. So like mm. if you correlate like five guys and that team scores 18 runs or whatever, I mean, that could score more than five other teams could combine. Whereas like in football on a main slate, it's pretty hard outside of that one Miami game this season that one team can score enough touchdowns uh, to, to, to win a slate by themselves. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I did also just want to mention one other per care badge bros brawl. First place, a thousand. It's not mentioned here, but if you win this one, John actually takes you on next year's NAR weekend. Um, yeah, we're going. Fact that <laughs> we're going straight up the hill, so you guys can see how terrible I am at trying to pull off a three sixty, just eating it over and over again. Hey, that looked that looked fun. Uh, all right, we're hopping in uh, a big board draft here. Got to get my my NFL drafting fix. Need four more. If you guys want to join us in these streets, Nez, any comments on the big signing, Josh Reynolds? 
to the Detroit Lions all the rage today, or to the Broncos I mean I know that's my that's my boy we are Josh Reynolds fans over here uh you know RIP to Marvin Mims season we we, we thought we had a real <laughs> one there uh we still don't know who's gonna be throwing them the ball right so I guess that's a whole that's a whole another thing but we'll call that a dub for uh for Waymo over in Detroit right I mean yeah one, I mean I'm sure they're gonna add somebody but that's one less piece over there and don't think folks that I'm not gonna talk about the yet the other Steelers bombshell news that took place in our absence. This happens every time we do a show, guys. There's some Steeler news that happens in between. CPAT to the Steelers after the new kickoff rules. I mean, who's <laughs> who is not more on the cutting edge than the Pittsburgh Steelers, folks? I, I really want to know the sausage on that because, you know, Arthur Smith already had him on speed dial regardless. But do you think Arthur Smith sees this rule come in and then is like just immediately calls up, up the phone. Cordero Patterson is like, <laughs> I would love to know the sequence of events if that was in motion before that or if that truly was the impetus. He's drafting a it's, lot of his like former guys so or bringing in a lot of his former guys. So I don't know. Yeah. It reminded me of like a news nugget when, you know, as soon as we get a news drop on one of the underdog tweet accounts that everybody pushes that guy up in ADP, like three, like three, four rounds or whatever. Arthur Smith was just like, we got the new rules. Boom. ADP jump CPAT. Like he just didn't even think about it. He's, He's just like, vaulting that rules. guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God. Crazy. Uh, yeah. So we have we have the one nine here. I see some friends, uh, Chipsy, who I did. Uh, Chipsy and I are going to try to have a better show uh, on Monday. I threatened to find him in Philadelphia and smash a large big board check over his head. Um, <laughs> let's uh, just I'm going to tell you right now, if we draft Joe Mixon, we might be doing this all over again. So let's just be aware of that dynamic. Uh, but yeah, uh, not it looks like a nice mix of, of badges and no badges here today. So what happened? Did Chip just snipe you? Just a typical no. snipe? He told me my team was dead because I took Joe Mixon eight picks past ADP. Um, Ooh, buddy. Yep. Rip. Yeah. Rip that team. Yeah. So I really I really let him have it. And uh, apparently he's still hiding under that bridge uh, in an <laughs> unidentifiable part of Philadelphia in fear. He's threatened um, to join me on a stream, so we can kind of like lure him out. Ooh. And then you get you get the tie man to the face, and then and then you go. You go. That's right. Uh, I'm excited to pick from this spot because I haven't had a lot of mid to late slots. Puka, AJ Brown. I literally do not think I have a share of AJ Brown in this contest. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, Garrett Wilson. What do you guys like? You want to set up a Philadelphia stack? I I think it'd be fun just because I have not selected AJ yet. You down with that, John? Yep. Sounds good to me. I'll, I'll ask you guys though. What do what do you think the Mike Williams signing? Uh, shout out to us for we nailed that one to the jets there. We did nail that one a couple shows ago there, but that, uh, that Mike Williams signing, what do you think that does for Garrett Wilson's value? I, I don't think it hurts it. I don't know if no, that, that's no, me yeah. being naive, but I don't think that it hurts it. I, I, I kind of like it as a sign of competence and as a sign of vote of confidence in Aaron Rodgers' health, in my opinion, at giving him a weapon like that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's going to help with the jets offense being, you know, keep, keep the ball rolling for them, get more first downs. That's more, more plays for, you know, Garrett Wilson. Yeah. And yeah. I, I mean, I think you, you look at the, the meta of all the top offenses, you know, that have a solid QB and are making pushes. They all have at least three weapons. And so it's like mm -hmm. get Garrett Wilson, like getting someone like Mike Williams. I mean, that's basically table stakes. And then I want them to still go out and draft a guy like, like a Brock Bowers or get that third weapon for the offense. Um, so yeah, I think it was a necessity. You just can't roll in the season with Alan Lazard as your number two. You just can't do it. Yeah. And think you're going to be successful. They can't get out of that contract either. Like he just has to be there. Brutal. The, the, I, I, I tend to agree with you guys though. Like, doesn't it feel very much like Garrett Wilson can be like Keenan Allen esque to Mike Williams, right? Like he does the dirty work and then some, right? the big body stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Garrett Wilson or Keenan Allen with some yards after catch juice. Yeah, like yeah. that's that's yeah. exciting. That and I think that kind of fits Rogers' bill right now. Um, all right, uh, Nico Barkley. Uh, I I also do not have a ton of Nico in this contest. Um, I would, I would go with Nico. I know Reeves Reeves just on the solo cast you were just on was like off on the Texans, which got me scared because I was like. Man, I think I kind of like this Texans offense a lot. 
I kind of like it too to balance my my heavy tank Dell bags okay. uh, in here. But I, I do just generally agree. Like after this Garrett Wilson pick, I, I think this is a super flat tier. Mm -hmm. um, if the Texans who, you know, they were rumored to be in the T Higgins sweepstakes, they were interested. They could certainly draft uh, a wide receiver. I believe what they pick at the top uh, or in the, in the second round near the top, like that could be a nice range. I would not be surprised to see like Nico's ADP dip. Uh, yeah, exactly. Setting up the correlation. <laughs> mix in. Um, so yeah, I, I think if you want to poke, hole, like you can poke holes in Nico this early, Marvin Harrison, this sure. early Rashi rice, obviously Adam. So I don't know. I just think this is a big tier here until, you know, mid late third round of wide receivers. Yeah. I, I like the, um, the idea of, of Nico too, just because I think if the, if the tech, if the Texans do add at wide receiver, it does feel more likely that tank would be the one to take the, the 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 larger hit to his production than nico if that does happen i don't know maybe that's just me being biased against against short kings but go ahead <laughs> <laughs> i was just saying are we taking for granted the fact that tank will even be ready for the start of the season yeah i mean just until we hear otherwise um yeah. but again if like obviously you want him to get be in there getting the reps getting up to speed but like even if you told me i'm gonna get you know full tank dell from weeks five through 17 like it doesn't change that much you know obviously you don't okay. want to pay premium for him but if that's what you're saying is you're losing out on a little early season production um but the, I, I think the way i'm kind of thinking of this offense is not that like nico or tank are a true alpha and it's going to be to the detriment of the other I guess you could, I was trying to think of like, what would be a good comp for it? Um, almost kind of like the bills, not necessarily player wise, but it's just like, those guys are all capable of popping off for big games. Um, and that because the pie will be so big offensively that you don't have to necessarily sweat as much, like who's the alpha, but that's not a perfect comp because Diggs was drafted so much higher than everybody else. I just think it's like, it's, it's about Stroud a lot more than like yeah. the players themselves. Like we've seen Nico kind of slowly ascend with lesser talent. And now Stroud just comes in and just immediately elevates those guys to me. Like, I'm just not going to overthink that too much. And, and like, and plus, like you said, how flat everything is past there. And we're, we're going to try something new. We're going to get you a little variety in the portfolio <laughs> here. Uh, I don't do a lot of Eagles either, but you know, I think they have a very wide range of outcomes. Yeah. yeah you want to said... lock up this, this hurts. AJ. I think so. Yeah. What do you it's think, interesting you when you take a risk. No, no, I like it. I like it. I like okay. it. I, I was just thinking that it was e interesting that we took Nico there when we could have done the Saquon thing and just stacked all three of them. But do you guys like this Eagle stack better without Saquon? I think I just in general, like with the mega stacks, the onslaughts, which I did in, in my video, the big board tips video, you know, sacrilegious mm -hmm. was talking about that. And I do really like it, but I, I do prefer it skewed toward cheaper like when we're i don't mind a premium double stack right because it's like you want that passing game going off but to invest your top three picks and include it in a running back i just feel like it's harder to traverse the gauntlet when you need super high-end scores from both the running back and the quarterback and pass pe catchers especially when like hertz and barkley are going to probably be more negatively correlated mm -hmm. than most quarterback running back pairings with how much hertz runs so like if we had, I don't know what a good example of this would be, um, maybe a Joe Mixon, you know, or if you had like a Joe Burrow and Joe Mixon and they're both cheaper and yeah. then like loading up on that correlation, I don't mind it. It just seems pricey for those top three. I agree, yeah. especially when you consider, like you mentioned, how, how each of them hits their ceiling outcome. It's that at that point, I think becomes a little uh, at the detriment of, of to the other. So now the thing is, do we want to do the De Devonta, which I'm, I'm fine with. Um, I think it's yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. Like if we're like if you're gonna get some eagles in your in your like in your portfolio, you might as well get some damn eagles. Let's just like, <laughs> to make, to the make, bet. make the freaking bet, you know. They are just like a very interesting team just because of how poorly they played at the end of last season. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean it's baked in. These these prices are are, are for the most part cheaper than they were last season, but uh, I, I'm not so convinced that it's going to be a, a straight bounce back, but obviously, like I mentioned, the range of outcomes are, are very wide. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's interesting. You said 
you know, the discount because it's like uh, AJ Brown's the same. Hertz yeah. is what, like a six pick discount. He was kind of going closer to the two, three turn. But then Smith is the really big one because he was going like pick 22, 23, and now you're getting him at 40. He was really the one where people felt burned uh, and are pushing him down the most. You really had to dodge the Smith and Hertz drafter to get Hertz back with AJ Brown. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. And this that, I guess that is really the difference of that ADP or the, the stacking uh, anchoring effect to the ADP. Whereas like before it was like, Hey, you're going to have to spend your first three picks to get this premium double. And now this year the market is letting you uh, sneak in a second round pick in addition, which was what, what you were kind of wanting to do last year, if you were going to do the Allen, the AJ Brown, or sorry, like the Allen Diggs, the AJ Brown, all of those premiums, it was like, you don't, you like that, but you wanted to sneak in one extra pick in there to make it feel really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like how it was kind of like forcing the Lamar Andrews one too, because you could get Lamar Andrews every single time if you pushed it up to two, three, but everybody wanted to do it by playing chicken in the middle of the board for the three, four. Yeah. I got a question for you guys. The the Keenan Allen one, we didn't talk about it last week uh, all that much. It looks like the market's corrected a little bit in terms of like DJ Moore um, falling and his um, DJ Moore basically at that one two turn aged like milk because now, you know, we see him go in the third round here. Has the market corrected enough? Is that good for you guys? Like they're obviously coming closer together like this, but like, What's the price tag for you guys? I like where he is right now a lot. You know, him with Caleb, I think is going to be a ton of fun. We've known DJ Moore is like really, really good. You know, like we've known this and we really haven't seen him have great QB play in a really long time. So this is going to be like, like, I think you can call Caleb Williams above average going into the season. Obviously there's downside potentially, but he's, he's, he's a clear cut number one QB. Like this is going to be, very excited to see DJ Moore with this. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I think his price, uh, DJ should probably fall a little bit, but he's just firmly in that tier. Um, I think I do prefer still like Waddle and neighbors to him, but Mm. I think they're all pretty close. Um, we are on the clock here. Pretty decent value on Zay flowers. I also like Kirk, um, Wow, what do that, you guys think here? That flowers fall is I, it always feels bad to take flowers without Lamar, but that's a hell of a fall if you want to just scoop that value. Yeah, let's do it. I yeah. like flowers in general, especially. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think they have to bring in somebody else with OBJ walking and whatever. I don't think you can yeah. roll with flowers and Bateman and whatever, but I don't think flowers roll changes nearly as much. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I agree with you too. And I, I was doing, so I'm making my video that I'm making uh, this week for the Deposit Kingdom channel should be ready tomorrow. It's looking at uh, dream scenarios for basically all of the top 12 to 13 pass catchers in underdog ADP for rookies. And then it was kind of a fun exercise of trying to envision then how much would their ADP jump if they did hit that. And you with doing that exercise, I did just as a decide, realize like the market's like, pretty close to pricing in like the upside where I was like doing some of these, I'm like, lad, okay. Yeah. You'd maybe move around. But anyways, when I was doing the Ravens, like them getting like a big body threat and I'll give a spoiler. I, I thought like a guy like Keon Coleman to mm. them. And then I was reading a uh, late round QB uh, or sorry. Yeah. Uh, JJ's prospect guide. And one of his comps for Keon Coleman was Rashad Perriman. So I was like, okay, this is perfect. Um, <laughs> but all this to the Zay flowers point of like them having a downfield compliment to like what Andrews and Zay do closer to the line of scrimmage. I think they'll certainly be in the market for that. And there's so Mm. many guys in this class who I think, you know, fit that bill. Yeah. You could put AD in that one as well. Um, laughing at some of the names here because Joe Mixon is here. If we really (laughs) want to fuck around with a premium double, uh, elite QB, we could get uh, our elite tight end in George Kittle or Kyle Pitts, all kinds of fun decisions here. Oh man, I think I go tight end here. What do you think, John? Let's spice it up. Let's play. Uh, go t- pets? <laughs> Let's spice it up, baby. Let's I knew you it. couldn't say no. I couldn't say no to that one. Gives us another stack out to later. I don't like doing the shroud thing as much. Yeah, me either. Um, I still I think we've had I don't know what show I've had this 
thought where I, I still think like I'm I'm Kittle uh over Pitts, but yeah. uh I see more and more Pitts going like right alongside Kincaid and Kittle. I think if if anything were to happen, because like there is a little bit of smoke with this Ayuk stuff around the Niners. And if anything were to happen, as, such as him getting moved out of San Francisco, then yeah, I think this is that that's not gonna age too well. Cause I think that immediately is a huge bump to George Kittle. Yeah. Yeah. And I also really want that to happen because he's been rumored to go to the Steelers. So <laughs> what do you guys think about some of these new price tags here? We see the Calvin Ridley in the fifth round there. I what is it, 56 or something like that? Yeah. Um, after the you guys see the coach speak index stuff yesterday with the buzzwords of moving them around, using them like chase kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, you guys buying any of that? Do you guys like that price tag? And then the other one I'd bring up is uh Marquise Brown is the highest riser in Mark now. And I don't know, rightfully so, because he gets Patrick Mahomes. But what do you guys think about those two? The Marquise Brown one, I I, I want to take some more of him. I keep kind of missing out on him. Uh, that one seems palatable to me, though. I do think the Chiefs are going to add another wide receiver. And depending on the caliber, that could be interesting. But man, I don't, I just, I struggle with the Ridley stuff. Like the moving him around is interesting, right? Because the Jags did not do that. And it was clearly to his detriment, but I can't shake that. Like Hopkins is better um, and is going after him. So I don't know where, what do you think, Nez? Is that Ridley ADP fine at 53? I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Uh, yeah. I mean, we know Levis can will, will sling it. It's just a matter of like, will he sling it accurately? And he has DeAndre Hopkins there. And I mean, the Titans are projected to be one of the worst teams in the NFL as of right now. I mean, their win total, they, they made these trades and their win total is below seven. Uh, as far yeah, as I saw it at I five mean, and a half, I think. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, well, it, it just, give it to it Williams just at bad. 74. Uh, wow. post Josh Reynolds. Um, wow. hello. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. I mean, I guess the galaxy brain take on that would be, Hey, uh, lose a bunch of games, uh, in be trailing in all of these games and have to chuck. A ton the commander's thesis we love it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um I, I guess will levis as as sam howell in that in that starring role oh he's he's works. he's literally sam howell in blue it's it's probably what he is and probably more willing to throw deep down the field and outside than howell was yeah which yeah hey all right i'm talking myself into this except they just bolster the secondary we need that that was the that was the key piece to the Howell thesis was that the there was True. nothing going on on the other side of the ball Yes. Do you guys think the Marquise Brown one lowers Rashi Rice or should like because he was just kind of like low A dot bit of a like volume merchant kind of player? I don't think sorry. so. Are okay. you sa- sorry? You're saying you think Marquise Brown should be lower? No, no, no. Uh, if Rashi Rice should be lower because oh. of Marquise Brown addition. I think they I think they coexist. I mean, there was so much room for another pass catcher in there. Um, did Mike Williams go yet? Oh no, he's. I think he. I think we have a ways for him. A hundred, but we can, we can lock him up here. I mean, this is definitely a wide receiver dead zone. I'm gonna say um, Najee. Otherwise, did you see that Najee lost twenty pounds? Did I see it, buddy? But I got, I got a push notification life. for it. We we got best <laughs> shape of his life videos at a at a new record, March twenty seventh. Best shape of his life. Pre OTA's best shape of his life. It's how bad he wants yeah. it, man. What can you say? <laughs> I mean, remember last year when he was running up the hills, or was that two years ago when it was you guys two years? Did... It was when yeah. Nez did the draft with us on ship chasing. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's wild. That was two years ago. Holy crap! Yeah, yeah. He's running up but, the hills. And what did we take him like in the like mid to late second? Wasn't it? In he fell to the second round, and we had yeah. we, it, we we talked pre-show about what we would do never once considered Najee falling to the second round and it was it was such a <laughs> such a smash <laughs> <laughs> we had to um, we were covered oh, nicely yeah. i don't care yeah um all right so we go Najee here for the audio listeners our team through seven rounds we got the premium double uh make the eagles great again please jalen hurts to aj brown and Devonte smith uh we also have nico collins and zay some spicy marks at tight end with kyle pitts and then nez's boy running back Najee harris so we're playing all the hits uh, as is tradition, we are. <laughs> Najee for nez so oh wow 
we totally underestimated the uh, the equity there of the of the snipe. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, John. So the Garrett Wilson drafter did take Mike Dub fifteen picks ahead of ADP, which is a social construct, so you can't you can't begrudge them too much. Can't fault them. Can't fault them for screwing the F down. Yeah. Um, I, I like yes. that pick right now, to be honest. Like I, um, yeah, I think this is probably the range he belongs. Well, there's there's like no other wide receivers going at this range, you know. Yeah, like, right. I, I, yeah, give me Mike Williams over Romeo Dobbs. Um, and I was a Dobbs guy last year, but things broke pretty poorly for Dobbs, and now he's going <laughs> yeah. higher than he was. Um, all right, what do we want to do here? I, I think we can we get some like green and yellow on the board. I think yeah. that's probably where we're looking. Uh, okay, let's just take the AD Mitchell ceiling yeah. play. Have some fun. Yeah, okay, or worthy, think, whichever you prefer. I do prefer worthy, but I don't think I'm going to get it in in time. No, I didn't. But that's fine. I need to balance it out. I actually was balancing it out the other day. Um, I just I was listening. I've been like this has been my take for a while that like I think worthy is going to go higher than people think and like for sure a first round pick yeah and you like look at mock drafts and they like occasionally you'll see the chiefs you know at the very end but for the most part they're like having him fall into the second and then i listen to travis may who's very very plugged in um in like knows of multiple teams who he says have uh or sources that say they're interested in taking him all the way up near like pick 20 um mm -hmm. And just being very bullish on how NFL franchises are thinking and evaluating Xavier Worthy. Um, and I'll, I'll do another spoiler for my video. I did do the Chiefs for Xavier Worthy. Oof. And I said, if that happens, I think by best ball mania lock, he will approach a fifth round pick. Oh, Pete. Like, yeah. think bigger. <laughs> it's gonna no, I, I think there's, I mean, there's, I a, there's a cap at some point. Um, yeah. Like, he's not going to go ahead of like Jaden Reed, but yeah, I, I think, I think fifth round uh, he could easily end up there. And I think any of the chiefs, if the chiefs take any of these, what top eight or nine wide receivers with that pick they're they're going there. Right. Just because of the way we already feel about these picks compared to, to years past, like the Rasheed Rice pick, we weren't like in love with Rice as a, as a prospect necessarily. And then, uh, and, and we weren't drafting him as though he was going to smash, but it would be definitely shark jumping. If Xavier worthy finished ahead of where Jamar chase closed his rookie season, like that would be, that would be kind of mind blowing, but also just like such a sign of the times. And if, I think you, everything's adjusted now on this new rookie crazed scale. Um, where, if, I mean, Rashi Rice, like the fact that the market wasn't higher on Rashi Rice is is kind of crazy in hindsight, just purely on paper. It's like, it doesn't matter who it is. They spend a decent pick on this guy. It's Patrick Mahomes, and they have nothing outside of Travis Kelsey. Like, that's wild. If um, he went to the Chiefs, would you guys rather have Hollywood Brown or Worthy? Worthy for me. Damn. I was going to say Brown. But I'm a black box kind of guy. I I know what I know what Marquise Brown is. Yeah. I feel like I think what you're gonna get from Marquise Brown is and this shouldn't be a diss, but you're gonna get a much better version of Mar Marquez Valdez Scantling. But I don't think he is gonna be like a focal point of the offense. I think he's just gonna be a way more reliable deep threat. Do you think it's impossible yeah. for him to do like his best season output? With Kelsey, with Rashi good. Rice and another uh, rookie, I think it would be really hard for him to get the targets yeah. to eclipse that. Like before he got hurt last year, he had like multiple like eleven target games with backup quarterbacks. But like he's not going to see that volume. Um, we're on the clock here. Running backs look good. Uh, I mean, I've been Zach trying to Moss. scoop up Trey Trey Benson. Uh, uh, Trey Benson's cool too. The uh, J John's tried to taste. Uh, Zach Moss up as high as he can get. Yeah, he is. <laughs> you know, I'm a spear slappy, but let's do Benson. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, the thing, like, I just think, I think Moss and Spears, I don't know. I, th I think Spears is just going to keep getting cheaper <laughs> based on how people feel That's about true. him. We literally just talked about the Titans win total, <laughs> <laughs> but all those check downs from Will Levis. Ooh, think about it. I also feel like um, Najee and a, a rookie are, are good pairings. Like we know how many touches we're banking with Najee 
and yeah. um, pairing him with some upside rookie there, I think makes sense. So do we, what are you guys thoughts? We're, we saw Brian Robinson on, at the top of the queue there. Do you guys have any like thoughts on, on what this commander's team is going to look like? Are they, are they likely to land? They're going to land the top QB, right? And like potentially Drake may. Yeah, I think I so. I think so. Something like that. Does that make you He's, excited? It's interesting, really? right? Because I think his initial ADP pre Eckler was like, we kind of saw him operate as a bell cow with the team not really entrusting Gibson, but yeah. then you bring in Eckler and it's like, you know, he's playing third downs. Like that's just, there's no question. So then you have to say, can you offset that loss of not getting as much pass catching work with an increase in touchdowns, which I think is possible. It's possible, but like Eckler yeah. is really good at the goal line. True. He's a really good goal line back, which is like, it's what's kind crazy. of scary. It's crazy how that narrative flipped eh? like he was the biggest positive re- like a touchdown regression candidate for like three years. And then he just had two of the most efficient goal line years right after that. Cause the knock on Eckler for the first two years, three years in the league was he never scores touchdowns. And then now he's Loki, one of the best touchdown. Uh, All right. Fight it out guys. Both of your picks made it back to us at, uh, in the 10th. I think Moss, I think Moss, uh, after like remembering what we said about the Titans and, John, yeah. I know your team, Moss. Team Moss. So we'll we have, have that one. Uh, back-to-back running back picks there. Trey Benson, Zach Moss join Najee. We got the Jalen Hurts double with Brown and Devonta, Nico, Zay, Ad Mitchell, and Kyle Pitts. Fun team. I like it. This is this is yeah. the most fun I've had drafting big boards. Mine don't look this good. I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm struggling a little bit here. <laughs> I'm really trying to find my footing. It's uh, yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, I, I maybe I just don't have the imagination for for some of these because like you really gotta gotta have an open mind when you draft these when you when you draft these right because we just <laughs> we just don't know i don't want to get sued but <laughs> yeah it, it is an interesting thing you know reeves i think it's it's a fascinating thing to think through the rookies because i think both sides are right and by both sides i mean those of us who are loading up on rookies, like basically breaking any tie in favor of taking the rookie black box and the people kind of pouring cold water on this class, obviously talking about the running backs. Like this is a weak running back class by prospect standards. You know, Lord Reeves has been kind of saying like, yeah, people are excited about the depth of this wide receiver class, but the production on all the high end guys is, is lacking um, Mm. in that depth range, not obviously for like neighbors and Harrison, uh, but saying that he sees a lot more, of like leap of faith for these guys turning into, you know, legitimate difference makers and just seeing more holes. And I think what's fascinating about that is like all of that can be true, but we still know what so many of these other players are and what they're going to return for us in our fantasy lineup. And even just the fact of hitting on the Puka or the tank or whoever that is this year still outweighs like just continually passing on rookies or not mixing them into the, our, our portfolio because they are the only ones like truly capable of smashing their ADPs. Like we've just seen that year after year. So I just think it's like a fascinating thing where people are like, you know, you're too rookie craze. Like there's no way this pans out. This is a weak class, but it's like, okay, well tell me what you are doing to identify league winners in rounds 10 on, because I, I will, I, I will listen to that, but it's, it's very hard to do if you're taking rookies off the board. Yeah, that's extremely well said. I think I think I need to be a little more comfortable too when I get past round ten. Just like understanding that a lot, like it, it really, it's okay. I mean, you don't want these guys to fail, but like you, you got, you can't be playing it safe back there. You know, that, that's not that's not how you win hundreds of thousands of dollars in these contests. That's that's just not the case. I think it's relative to like the way in which fantasy football's changed. Is like we play best ball now. And those are the swings we want to be taking now. Like the the our lens, the paradigm which we view these players has to ship it like shape in the direction in which you're saying, Pete, where it's like, give me these black box things because how am I beating? I'm not trying to beat eleven other teams in my home league. I'm trying to beat everyone. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's crazy too because um, you know the other wow. thing is it's people also get caught up on you know, oh, well, what if they break out? What if they're not good? And it's like, the whole thing is it doesn't even necessarily matter as rookies 
if they're actually good or they pan out as prospects. I mean, it's like the Tyquan Thornton thing. You know, last year, A.T. Perry, what? Last game of the season had two touchdowns. It doesn't look like he's going to yeah. be some mega smash. But if you were taking him as a late round flyer, like that's what's so nuts about all of this stuff is they don't even have to be good. You just know that they're going to get a few chances because the team wants to say like, hey, did this investment work out for us? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's well put. Um, trying to see here. There's plenty of quarterbacks here. We can probably still push it with Hertz and try to so. find another stack. Yeah. Um, tight ends gross here. So oh we do have the rookies, Keon Coleman, yeah, Lake Coleman Warm, right. Jalen Wright. Yeah. I'd say running back. Do another running back. Yeah. Yeah. I like Coleman. I'm on I'm on record. I think we draft Coleman every time we do a we do a show. Yeah. So yeah. We, can, like we, we can pass on that and let somebody else get the get the equity. I just can't pick my priors on big body X receiver from like the the previous era. Like I'm yeah. still trying to draft like uh I'm still trying to draft what, what uh Doriel Green Beckham and Miles Boykin. I'm still trying to draft those guys. I thought you know? I thought the previous era was just like a nickname for QJ. I thought you were just referring yeah. to QJ specifically. <laughs> no, I think no. that's like the I'm older than that. It's like the stench <laughs> of that 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 type of receiver, such as the rookie wideout a la Sky Moore, and why we kind of were you know not so quick to take Rushy Rice because didn't pop as a prospect kind of felt like Sky Moore 2.0 all over again. Like oh, well, don't you know rookies in Andy Reid's system just don't work out. The irony is that Sky Moore was supposed to be, um, you know, the the response to chasing all the big-bodied athletic guys, and it's like, okay, he's not quite as insane athletically, but he had this incredible production profile. Like that was supposed to be the yeah. thesis that he was actually good. Yeah, that's <laughs> baseball scouting 101 there. Like you know, when you yeah. have your Jose Altuve's, your five nine first round picks in in the battle royales, you know, you're just like, what if we just apply this to a game that is 100% physical? Well, for yeah. every Sky Moore. I mean, not for every Sky Moore, but I mean, the other end of that spectrum is Tank Dell, who yeah. played with another really good quarterback. Like, if you knew those those things blind, like you would bet, you know, 50-50 on that. So I was going to float Cousins to stack it up, but he goes unstacked uh, to... Bold. Yeah. Um, I, I'm fine taking Keon Coleman, uh, though he is um, near the top here. Coleman... Um, yeah, uh, I like Corum and that other. We had another wideout on the board too. I think uh, Wicks, but I like either of these two. Let's do Coleman. Yeah, Coleman's fine. <laughs> let's do something new. Yeah. yeah let's do, <laughs> do you know what's so funny? Um, so you know how in my scroll down video, how I made the uh, the joke about Bub Means. Yeah. <laughs> so he's on I the cover today. I keep seeing more stuff about Bub Means. I literally just saw a tweet. <laughs> the let me, ghost let me, of Bub is... <laughs> dude, I, I get, I'm get. i telling you, I reverse mushed him into relevance here with that joke. Um, this What was the tweet here? Uh, oh, he's pit a pit wide receiver. Guy. Yeah, Nez, this has to be your guy. Uh, pit wide receiver Bub Means has been a hot name on the trail as of late. Means had Zooms with the Cardinals and Raiders and is garnering significant interest from the Chief Patriots and Jets. If Bub goes no. like that clip is going to haunt me. I'm like, yeah, you don't <laughs> want to push it too far. Scrolling down for guys named Bub means, and then watch this guy be this year's Puka. Like, you know, what's yeah. wild is that Pitt basketball has a player named Bub as well. Really? Bub Carrington is, is a real <laughs> player. What's they, they just like re all, recruiting all the dudes named Bub. I think that's good process, right? That's a, that's hilarious. That's a good <laughs> that's like, oh my I'm God. surprised you didn't know him as a pit guy. This is like when uh clay, on the club realized Noah Gray went to Duke and it just completely shattered him as a UNC guy. <laughs> I'm not, I don't really keep up with the college sports quite as much. That's my, that's my cop out there. And I pay yeah. equal attention to, to Penn state as well. They're a little closer to home. Here's a little secret that you don't have to pay attention to the, to the college football because all you need to do is just ingest like information for like a month and a half after yes. the NFL season. And then you get to just pretend and LARP around <laughs> like a, a, a rookie expert. <laughs> There's an old tweet that says, I'm about to go skim box scores and argue with people who watched the whole game tonight. And that's like <laughs> how I feel about these rookies. Like, thank you for, thank you, Pat Hooray for pouring your heart and soul it out for hours and hours on end. So I can consume it in 15 minutes and yeah. call myself an expert. <laughs> the uh i think i'm gonna write about it for the newsletter tomorrow just because there's 
there was the did you guys see the Jim uh, or the the Harbaugh quote about kind of just like waxing about how he wants to run his offense and everyone be like they're so clearly taking an offensive tackle uh with this pick but then on the flip side you see Malik neighbors just have this insane pro day like they're probably going to have their choice if they wanted of Marvin Harrison or Malik neighbors there um if someone were to trade up to four and they just lost Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and have like nothing at wide receiver. Yeah. It'd be like the most obvious selection for a team. And it's, I think the thing that frustrates me is I would understand it. Like if they were like, Hey, we have the, no offense, Nez, we have the Russell Wilson, okay. Justin Fields situation. We have the Will Levis. Let's just establish the hell out of it. Like, okay, mm -hmm. go do that. But you have Justin Herbert. Like there's about 20 plus franchises in the league that would auto trade their quarterback with yours. And you yeah. don't want to go and get him at least one usable wide receiver. Yeah, Weird. absolutely. Because if they I mean, didn't take neighbors, like man, and let's say like and, and worst case scenario for Marvin Harrison Jr., he goes to the Patriots. How close do those two get to flipping? Right. Yeah. It, yeah. You, they they would. I think they would flip in that scenario. Yeah. 100%. We may never see a lower price tag on Justin Herbert. Like he went in the eleventh round here. <laughs> like that's yeah that, like when i saw that i like i audibly gasped i was like whoa like, this, it this... is it's 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 do you know what's so crazy about it and again going back to the game we play is i don't even think it's a product necessarily of how people view justin herbert obviously like having less weapons hurts but it's more so of just people don't have the stack that they're lining up there's no early right. chargers that you're taking so you're never thinking like or you're never saying i'm excited to backdoor stack justin herbert either <laughs> so oh, yeah just kind of like Palmer, like that's great I, this is what, yeah. I, what i enter a draft thinking to do seriously and it's like uh, man it's like uh, greg roman showed no creativity with lamar and like that right he, 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 that's like the ultimate quarterback to show creativity with i like wicks yeah, Wix is Wix is fun uh, to me here. What do you think, John? Yeah, I'm good with it. It's a tough range. Is Marshawn Lloyd getting overhyped? I mean, like the dude was a transfer, went to USC, like for his last year there. Like, he never really. I don't know. He just doesn't look that good. I don't yeah. know. When I, when you're, I you're the, the, the Pac-10 guy, so you have you know the the closest boots on the ground. I don't know. Yeah, what's the uh, the mock draft, the big board thing? Um, Mel Kiper? No, or sorry, the consensus. I think it was because he was uh, ahead. Where is he? No, yeah, he's he's dropping on here too. So, like to John's point, like Braylon Allen, they have Bucky Irving going ahead of him. Yeah, I feel like there was must be some anchoring effect to Lloyd's ADP um, because it doesn't seem like he should be going quite as high as he is. Yeah. Is Irving in the player pool? Is Bucky Irving? Yeah, it's yep. Bucky. I know. We've, we taken, see that name. we've taken him. We, I think we took him in our first draft just because we liked the name. <laughs> that sounds yeah. about right. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is another one, too. Like, if you just – oh, we're, sorry, we're on the clock. I was hoping Michael Mayer would fall back, and he does. Do you guys like that? Yeah, I mean, as far as tight ends go, it's probably as good as it's going to get. Gives us a nice out at that Gardner Minshew stack, too. Lest we forget. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise we do not have much else cooking stack-wise. So no, we'll have to fine. figure out. But we, we have a lot of uh, flexibility with, with Hertz there. Man, nobody um, wants to click Deshaun Watson's name, but like, nope. is there a chance for a bounce back this year? I don't think so. I just don't. Yeah. I, I just like how many times do we have? How many chances does he get? Mm -hmm. Um, I was just gonna say, yeah. like, looking at this. Not that this is the end all, be all. This uh, aggregated big board mock draft stuff, but mm -hmm. I mean, my main thing and one of Karain's tips too from the the video, um, for the best ball tips video was just like we want to be mixing up our bets here, and like the market will get like overconfident in some more than the other, and like Troy Franklin was the more buzzy guy pre-combine and now you can see him slipping post-combine in some of these mocks and yet he's still going ahead of keon coleman who is closer to you know xavier worthy and ad mitchell now 
Um, and just like, I want to more use this stuff of like trying to get as close to projected draft capital as possible. Like I almost would want to make my board, like, especially after the top guys, like rank it like this, just like who's going, who's going the highest, um, in this range. And that's not necessarily how the ADP is settled. This is cool. I haven't seen this before. Yeah. It's fun to, fun to tap through. I'm, I'm throwing my hat in the ring after this video that you're making pete and all this worthy talk i'm I'm throwing my hat in the ring that that he becomes the the ship chasing video this year <sighs> is he, he too I good of a he's, prospect he's i think he's too popular because it's supposed he's to be like good? unearthing a bit of okay. a gem okay, yeah because okay. i LaVisca thought he was, gonna... was unheralded uh yeah. sky more like relative this guy had like just enough hype. That's what like really took it out of control. It's like there was just enough outside hype that made like the Visca stuff really go nuclear. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was what, weird. what we're really waiting on is cause like, I think part of the purity of figuring out who is this year's, you know, ship chasing clip, it's been a little destroyed by Pat and I being so like plugged into the market uh, with <laughs> stuff where like we yeah. need like Gretch's like, finally you know diving in and just falling in love with this prospect looking at some numbers and he's like pull up this guy's highlights right now like we need that moment because i think i'm just we're just too scarred you know we we know the (laughs) adps for all these guys we've already um developed opinions like the time i saw sky Moore, that was the first time i ever saw him with my eyes the first time i saw lavisca (laughs) chenault was on a randomizer draft with tj hernandez and we pulled up the highlights oh man and i discovered him for the first time and so it's like I need to be reborn and see one of these prospects in a new light. <laughs> Grinch will do that. Yeah, like, He'll do it with conviction too. Yeah. Like you, you never, at this point in time, three years ago, you never would have known who like Dylan Lube was or whatever. No fucking way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. None. None. <laughs> like you, you, every year you would, you would know about the guys who had insane combines for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why you would know the Xavier worthies or whatever. But yeah, these, these super deep guys that are getting drafted, um, we, we are in a new era now. It's going to be some small school guy then. Like that's going to be the new mantra now. It's going to be like some kid from Toledo that we haven't heard of or something like this. <laughs> yeah. Um. Geez, right after we talked about it, Deshaun Watson is now uh, two rounds past ADP um, and Will Levis goes ahead of him. Good Lord. Um, I still don't want see. it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think we need to do i think we can do another running back um okay probably be the pick here ray davis roshan uh i still like keaton um keaton's kind of fun yeah yeah we got save flowers to make a little bit of a team bet yeah he can be the uh the the tajay spears to to derrick henry of 23 on on this on this ravens team if he heals if he heals uh good he could be the yeah. uh, Devin HN to or HN to uh, do poster <laughs> with Henry scoring twenty touchdowns. Yeah, just yeah, having exactly. be the most efficient running back ever. Easy, yeah, <laughs> easy game. Yeah, like this right. Yeah, so tough. what? What do? What do you? What's our quarterback plan? Oh, I guess we do need one. Um, let's can see, we hit let's the purple see. button. Yeah, let's crank the purple for a second. See what happens. I, JJ I mean, to JJ. Which JJ? <laughs> Sorry, that was a uh, that was that, that was copyright oh, tr- <laughs> to crack from, rock from, with that. Yeah. But we got JJ there. I mean, he's gonna probably start for a team, um, just as a yeah. as an option. I mean, Derek Carr. Uh, just I don't, I don't know, man. We, if you want to play it safe, we could take Derek Carr. But I think let's keep let's keep pushing it. Okay. Um, because I, I yeah. do think we could do something like a JJ McCarthy and even do whatever. Um, should, we should probably do another running back or wide receiver here. Yeah. And I don't know anything about Ray Davis, but he's not a backup to he, Deandre Swift. Yeah. He wears a suit in his photo. Okay. I'm in. Oh, Hmm. What is it? Where does that mean? He goes to school. Yeah, he he looks like it's interesting. Uh, he, he went to Kentucky. I know that. Yeah, they they wear suits. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Shipley Shipley still on the board. Pat has him more buried in his ranks. Um, him he's slightly ahead. Um, Ooh, interesting. But in like a similar tier as Ray Davis for how the mock drafters are putting him. And then Isaac 
Guarendo, who was in the uh, rookies and sophomores player pool, but not in the big board player pool. People are excited about him, aren't they? Yeah. yeah he well, he just destroyed the combine. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He I was mean, like they're... a, a Raz score guy. Okay. Because he's pretty, pretty big for his, or his speed was good for his size. Kentucky's mm. kind of been RBU for a little bit, or at least that's what I have in my mind. Maybe a little, maybe I confuse them with Memphis a little bit, but I think, I think we can feel good about the Ray Davis pick. He's a bowling ball. RBU yeah. Memphis. And we're just giving like, Antonio Gibson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> RBU, baby. It's RBU, RBU, baby. They gave us Antonio Gibson. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> oh, man. The, uh, so, yeah, here, here's our team uh, through 16 rounds. Still just Jalen Hurts holding it down at quarterback. Running back room coming together well. Uh, Najee and Zach Moss, Moss locking up some touches. Three rookies, Trey Benson, Jalen Wright, Ray Davis, and a little clackety-clack, uh, one of the most fun rookie running backs last year who got hurt in Keaton Mitchell. Wide receiver room is nice. A.J. Brown, Nico Collins, Devontae Smith, Zay Flowers, A.D. Mitchell, Keon Coleman, and Dontavian Wicks, and then Kyle Pitts, Michael Mayer at tight end. So, yeah, I think, I mean, like structurally uh, or how we've kind of allocated uh, our, our positional capital, I think mm -hmm. is pretty solid. Um, it just isn't fun – uh, not having that second quarterback you really like. Yeah. 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 I think we, we're just definitely uh, obviously shooting the moon with, with Hertz, but we'll, we'll, we'll make up for it. I do want to say there actually are quite a bit of notable names from Memphis that <laughs> okay, played running back. Let's hear, let's hear, people yeah, people yeah. forget Daryl Henderson went to Memphis. Tony mm. Pollard, famous Memphis Tiger. Oh, that was an easy one. We, we, we talked to Antonio one. Gibson, uh, Kenneth Gainwell, the best running back in an Eagles uniform in the last 10 years. <laughs> Also, mm. there. other than Boston Scott. Yeah, other than Boston Scott, of course. And that's where the list quickly ends as far as drafted running backs for, for the right. Memphis Tigers. Yeah. Um, Tavian Sanders goes off the board here. Let's see. Is there any other things we should consider at quarterback? I mean, there's only like five guys left, four now, who like are probably even likely to start. Derek Carr, Daniel are we, Jones, Russell Wilson, and Gardner Minshew. Are we taking two of them, or are we just taking one? What do you I, think? I think Pete would prefer two. I, I mean, I, but only if there were two names we liked. I mean, at this point, I think Gardner Minshew uh, yeah. makes sense as a QB2 uh, stacked with Mayer, but yeah. like if we're just shooting the moon for upside, I mean, Daniel Jones is like the only guy here that has any juice to like – get in our starting lineup most likely. And he's not even guaranteed, you know, to play 17 games. That's true. Yeah. I think I'd do dimes and Minshew. I agree. That's what I would do. Yep. If I could have my choice, it would be those two. Yeah. Let's grab dimes here. Um, There's a chance and, that, that Mitchell or Coleman end up on one of those teams too. I feel like they're both a little needy at wide receiver. For sure. How's that for cope? Well, <laughs> they would be interesting, like, because a lot of people mock, neighbors to uh the giants mm -hmm. um it would be interesting if for some reason like the cardinals and chargers are just like boom we're just going to double tap harrison and neighbors because i guess like would you would you just take rome if you had your heart set on a wide receiver there or do you then go to a different position i mean if you're shrewd and working quick on your feet you probably try and trade down yeah if they get Nate, I mean, I know part of the QB ADPs at the moment, at least in the back end, I think can be attributed to the fact that there are 20 rounds and we're kind of taking some shots like ahead of the 18th there. But if Dimes ends up getting neighbors there, he probably climbs up boards considerably, right? Just because he's so A easy stack. to stack, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was kind of hoping we would be able to get, I, I like Hyatt. Uh, Me too. So Hyatt Jones would have been a nice little cheap cheap stack there yeah i'm gonna keep chasing the hyatt profile for sure he flashed some decent stuff last year whenever he ran more than four routes yeah and i mean at these prices it's like i mean he can literally give you like one and a half spike weeks as a 17th round pick and you're pretty happy <laughs> yeah <laughs> at yeah. this range yeah we're at this uh, point in the draft where it's like are we even sure Minshew beats out aoc like, no we are not no we're not no, but they gave better, him a, but... 
Yeah, they gave him enough money that, like, I mean, they basically gave him what Dua and, you know, A Rich and those first round guys are getting on rookie deals. They basically gave him that, which is in this day and age, I guess, starters money for like a low end starter, but I don't know. I'm trying to pack my bags with as much Jalen McMillan. He's on the cover, baby. He's on the cover. He's on the cover. I heard he's been going in like the 15th round of, of some of these. He's getting a ton of hype um, just from everybody. Again, that Travis May stuff, he was just gushing about Jalen McMillan on the road of his podcast. Um, the Amon Ross St. Brown comps are being thrown around. Um, the draft capital they think is going to be there uh, probably around three a, pick, high round three. I was a little butthurt when um, <laughs> Gretch, Gretch called him uh, – unreliable as his one word to describe him because I used the word smooth and I, I, I mean, <laughs> smooth and unreliable. Yeah. Those are two very, con, uh, very you know, connote two different things. Yeah. I, I think Davis's take is right. He said this on the swole cast. He thinks Gretch is going to come around on Jalen and I do too. Okay. All right. Wow. I mean, I didn't really, I mean, so Penix had a Dunze. Polk and McMillan there. Is he just like a, a, a great wide receiver room merchant? Like CJ Stroud? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we take them away. And now, now the comp is uh, Garrett Wilson was a CJ Stroud merchant. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is something for like winning contested balls downfield with that wide receiver core, but he was a pretty accurate, like 20 plus yard passer. I saw yeah. one terrible. Game. Versus I saw pressure, one game though. of, of Penix and I was like, I'm in. <laughs> it, probably biggest, wasn't the, it probably wasn't. It probably wasn't the national game. championship. <laughs> it was the second biggest game of his life, is what it was. Didn't watch the Natty Championship because the Oregon Ducks to... game. Yeah, when he just yeah, that's the game I watched too. And I was yeah, like, and I was like, yeah, holy yeah. shit, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> He's dropping dimes. Yeah, I mean, he looked good. He looked, and he was. And then, he then he faced an. Then he faced an NFL level pass rush in the national championship, and it was. I don't know. We might be talking about him very differently, though, if there isn't a Rome drop. Like, Rome dropped a 30-yard touchdown in that game that was, like, a really nice pass that he probably normally wouldn't and was wide open, too. Maybe we're talking a little bit different about that. If it was a little closer, a little better, yeah. he gets that stat. The um, I, How about this for two picks? Is there a more I... Uh, have x open and i follow fantasy football news back-to-back -back picks than josh reynolds and khalif raymond is that the most like <laughs> i'm paying attention back-to-back -back picks you'll ever see yeah there you go that's josh that's reynolds. the i got push notifications on the uh, underdog amazing. nfl account <laughs> the the best part of that is i think i was on a best ball breakfast a couple weeks ago and i was talking through like the scroll down stuff and that the lions were actually a good one um because reynolds and khalif raymond weren't getting drafted uh in basically any of these and that would that would have worked out well too like if you're just splitting your bets between those guys because you're getting guy who's not drafted in 100 percent of these and now you're getting a value boost to both of them um so but now it's just fun to see them go uh back to back here <laughs> Yeah, this reactionary market that we live in—that's exactly what. That's the, this is this is the equivalent of the the Arthur Smith going out and getting CPAT, but in a big board draft. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, we have two more picks here. We're at a two six eight two. Um, I think we said we could uh we could mess around with Gardner. Um, I think I otherwise, read that, I think Damian. Who? I read that Damian Pierce pick as uh, Daenerys Prince and had PTSD from last season. Oh, God. Jeez. <laughs> He's a riser, baby. <laughs> He's, we're going to get the CLV in the 19th. <laughs> yeah. Did you see um, the Tank Bigsby comments? Did you mention that? No. What What? What were the comments? My Travis Etienne pick it keeps aging like milk. They Doug Peter, I think it's it was Doug Peterson, said that he he's like, we got to get him going. We have to get him going. That's why we drafted him. He's too good. Okay. Um, yeah, do you guys want you want to scroll down or Michael like Thomas? It. Oh wow. Is that crazy? Sure. We took Johnny Wilson last time, right? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think we did. I think Corrine and Gretch were on uh were on Michael Thomas. Uh he can be our last wide receiver. 
what do you guys think about the Minshew stuff? I think we could be asking ourselves a question like, what does Minshew do for this team other than getting a third stack? Um, right. Or do we think a seventh running back would be more beneficial? We could also do tight end and stack like Bellinger or something. Hmm. I think with our running back room, like if you think about it, three rookies, Keaton Mitchell, who, you know, injury timeline, TBD, Najee, okay. Zach Moss. I think I might prefer the extra running back bullet. You could hand we, cuck it with uh, Justice Hill. How about this for a correlation one? How about how about a little Eric Gray? I mean, not that fun, but currently the RB2 there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that's there's not much juice, but if I, we're trying, yeah, to, I know it's he's not a rookie, so it's not as fun. But I like the Eric Gray pick. What if he's what if he's the uh, the Kyron Williams? I mean, I know. It's oh, way okay, different. well now it's like okay. click, 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 <laughs> click, click. <laughs> that's right. Nez compares Eric. Call us Eric Gray, Kyron Kyron Williams. You heard it here first, folks. There you oh, go. Oh man. Oh, the, are we are we like we just kind of scanned over Deuce Vaughn? We all assume that the Cowboys are bringing in someone else, but are we too low on this, you know, Rico Dowell slash um, Deuce Vaughn stuff right now? I I think that is the most likely thing that they get kind of like a bigger bodied lead back rookie type, like a Jonathan uh, Brooks, Brooks. um, a Braylon Allen, you know, like a type like that. And then you kind of have a three headed ish monster with Rico change of pace and then deuce doing some is like you know jumps out of jerry jones's pocket onto the field and does a few <laughs> cute little things um but yeah i mean like good offense contingent upside um you know jonathan brooks coming off of an acl so like who knows if he's going to be ready like you could have a scenario where rico is like the lead back for the first six or seven weeks until he ramps up um but yeah i, I like that call i think i mean i like those rookies but rico is probably too cheap yeah oops um i'm gonna hit uh two things in the chat real quick yeah, yeah ga saying that the spoiled like milk we get in these phases when we're streaming every single day where we just like fall and fall back on these crutch phrases we did it with the thrust up last year oh, we baseball. were thrusting way too we were often. thrusting we were thrusting so so heavy and then there and then this one you can go ahead and upload these drafts straight to fantasy life the big word ones yeah. work with that one and you can see your exposures see your combinatorial ownership, all that sort of stuff. And that's free. So go check out fantasy life. If you're talking football, if you're not, um, spike week does some stuff for multiple sports and in our in deposit fantasy kingdom life, discord, there's, there's some stuff. Yeah. In uh fantasy life, they're going to be, we're going to have a bunch of new features for the best ball hub, um, coming up this year. Um, mm -hmm. unfortunately I don't think they're going to launch, uh, until after the draft for those post-draft contests, but going to be lots more ways, uh, to slice and dice, uh, that stuff. Yeah. So that, that is it working for 2024 question will be post draft then. So it's not working for big board right now or it is, you know, you know, I'll be completely honest. I have not, uh, attempted it, but you okay. should be able to upload the whole way the thing works is that you could upload from any of the contests. I guess the only thing that might throw it is if it was a 20 round versus 18 round. Uh, mm. I will, I should know that that's, uh, uh, I will test it and I will, uh, I will get back to you. Okay. Sounds good. Um, all right guys, anything else here as we land the plane? No, got we, some uh, baseball tomorrow. Oh, sorry. Go yeah, ahead, we're going to do, 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 <laughs> do opening day party tomorrow so uh first pitch is 1 10 p.m eastern with fingers crossed hopefully one of those games gets off in the early window there and we'll do a watch alongside while we draft for the main slate if those games do not get off we'll just have kind of an extended uh drafting period prior to uh to first pitch would then probably be 4 p.m eastern then nez if if yeah, they already yeah. canceled two of the early games so yeah, oh, well, so two are gone now. Okay, hmm. yeah. So we might have Angels and Baltimore in the background while we draft for the main slate. But tons of contests, so go help us fill those bad probes, uh brawl, and I'll be drafting the main slate the remainder of today. And then very special guest in the works for next week, baseball-related. Not going to say too, too much, but uh, Underdog has been making some big moves with some talent acquisition, and we might be the beneficiaries of something like that. So nice. 
Very nice. Uh, all right. Appreciate you guys heading out. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the Badge Bros here. I will get this audio up on my In a Vacuum podcast feed as well. And we will catch you guys here uh, next Wednesday. Might be a 1.30 Eastern uh, start next Wednesday. Uh, but yeah, until then, we'll see you guys next time on Off and on the Clock. Deuces.